All right, so we're doing muscles of the head, face, and then there's some stuff here with regard to the neck. So we'll name the muscles and we'll explain uh, what they do. All right. So basically what you see here is the representation of the muscles once the skin has been pulled off. So the skin has been removed, the layer of adipose has been removed, and now you see the muscle. The muscle obviously is in pink. When you see gray or white, that represents the tendon component. All right. So here at the top, okay, this is a kind of a collection of four pieces uh, that kind of work together. Uh, the main component is this large flat tendon. This is known as the epicranial aponeurosis. Okay, epicranial aponeurosis. And attached to this tendon, there are four muscles, uh, three muscles, sorry. The frontalis, Not much of it really here, but there's supposed to be an occipitalis, a small one back here. And then here, the temporoparietalis, temporoparietalis, for the temporal bone to the parietal bone, temporoparietalis. So this covers the skull, All right, covers the skull. And this kind of keeps the skin of the skull tight and the muscles that attach to it, occipitalis, temporoparietalis, frontalis, pull on that and keep that tight. Okay, so pulling, pulling, and pulling. Now, as I said earlier, the muscles of the face are involved with actions that we refer to as facial expressions, smiling, frowning. This one wrinkles the forehead. So when it contracts, it causes the wrinkles, right? That's where your first Botox injection will be, right? Right there. Because if you have wrinkles, life is done, right? I mean, the ugly wrinkle, you're not a player, it's over, right? So Botox injections. So that's the first grouping that covers the cranial bone. All right, let's work down to the eye area. So here you have a large circular muscle around the eye, obicularis oculi. Okay, it's a circular muscle. The muscle is shaped like a donut. When it contracts, it closes your eye tight. Close the eye tight. Okay. The eyelid it's called the Leveda palpebrae superioris. Leveda palpebrae superioris. That's the eyelid. Okay? That's blinking when you're blinking. Okay, so there's a blink, and then there's close the eyes tight. Okay. Let's go down to the nose. So now when you use this model and you use the other model, they're built a little differently, so it's a little bit of confusion from one to the next. Let's work this one out. There's a muscle that goes from the right side of the nose across to the left side. That's the nasalis. That flares your nostrils. So if you want to take a lot more air in, flare your nostrils, nasalis. Right? There's a product on the market that was manufactured based on that muscle, right? Anyone know what that product is? <coughs> the breathe right strip, right? That nasal strip, right? It, if you put it across your nose, it pulls and flares your nostrils to get more air in. And that's what the nasalis does. All right, so let's follow this up. Now let's kind of look close here. There's a muscle running along the nasalis going up onto the bridge of the nose. We're going to refer to that as the procerus. The procerus. All right. It works along with another muscle, which is absent from this model, that goes right across here, right across the area where the eyebrow is. It's called the corrugator supercilii. All right. That's so where we're going to bring this guy in, okay? Because here. 
the nasalis, and then if you follow the proceris coming up, and then you see the one going across the eyebrow here, that's the corrugator supercilii. So like I said, there's differences from one model to the next. The corrugator supercilii and the proceris, when they contract, they wrinkle the skin here at the top of your nose. So if you like to do that kind of thing, that's what the muscles do. Corrugated, to corrugate, to fold the skin between the eyebrows above the nose. All right, so the nose and a couple of muscles related to it. Let's go down to the mouth. All right. So like the eye, there's a muscle that goes all, a circular muscle goes all the way around the mouth. The orbicularis oris. Oculi oris. Like the one for the eye that closes the eye tight, this one closes your mouth tight. And or puckers your lips, right? If you want to pucker, getting ready to kiss your boyfriend and girlfriend, all right? That's the orbicularis oris. Goes around the mouth. Now, there's a lot of little tiny muscles that come off of the skin and tissue around the nose, below the eye, that then insert into the orbicularis oris. All these little strips of muscle tissue here that influence the position of your mouth and lips. So for smiling, grinning, laughing, frowning, grimacing, these then control those motions. So let's start with this one right here. It's coming right down here. Seems to be going from the nose to the corner of the mouth. The corner of the mouth we call the angle. So we call this the levator anguli oris. It's going to take the angle and bring it up. So we refer to it as smiling. Okay. Here. There's a muscle here coming down, and then there's one underneath it. Okay, so we refer to this as two different muscles. All right, one of these goes along with this. These are a pair, the zygomaticus pair. Zygomaticus minor and major. They come off of the zygomatic bone. We refer to these as laughing muscles because they're stronger and when you're laughing and the mouth is really moving, zygomaticus. Right. Underneath the minor, right, this goes to the upper lip. So it's coming down on an angle like so to the upper lip. So we call this the levator labii lip superioris, upper lip. Levator labii superioris. What does this muscle do? It pulls this lip upward. All right, if you want to make that funny face, pulls the lip upward. Elevates the upper lip. Okay. Coming directly off the angle straight back, risorius, and that's for the grimace, meaning if you pull your mouth side to side, the grimace. All right. And then for frowning, below that. So you have this one here, comes from the angle and it's kind of curved. Depressor anguli oris, frowning. This one here, which goes to the lower lip, depressor labii inferioris, that pulls the lower lip down. Okay. And then right here, coming off of the mental protuberance, right, the chin, there's two muscles, one, two. They're called the mentalis. And for some people, there's a gap between the two, and you have that little dimple on your chin. Some people, they're close together. The mentalis allows you to wrinkle the skin of your chin, right, if you like to do that, mentalis. All right. Let's go here to the side. There are four muscles for chewing. There's more than four, but we refer to it as the four muscles of mastication. 
mastication is chewing. This large, powerful rectangle here, that's the masseter. The other one, known as the temporalis, not shown here. Temporalis, it's deep. This model that we're working with is this, superficial. You gotta take all this off, down to the bone, temporalis, that's the second. Two muscles called the medial and lateral pterygoids, which you cannot see here. The medial and lateral pterygoids are four, two, two other muscles of the four. You have to remove the ramus of the mandible, and underneath is the medial and lateral pterygoid. Medial and lateral pterygoid medial, up and down behind the teeth, lateral across the top, pterygoids. Along with the temporalis, along with the masseter, four muscles of mastication. Masseter. There's the large parotid gland. It sits over the masseter. In here, in the hollow, this hollow aspect of your cheek, here in the in the hollow aspect of your cheek. Underneath these is what we call the buccinator. The buccinator is all this muscle tissue of your cheek, okay? Serves two purposes. If you play a wind instrument and you wanna blow into it, buccinator. When you're chewing your Big Mac, right? It pushes the Big Mac that's in your mouth towards the midline so that stays underneath the teeth to get crushed. So it's pushing the food towards the midline during the process of chewing. It doesn't move the mandible, it just compresses the food. Last but not least, okay, so here's the temporal parietalis. It was part of this uh, epicranial group. There's a little guy here, let's just take a quick peek little guy here, okay. Um, I'm not sure exactly where he would be, but there's another little guy here next to it. And there should be another one somewhere over here. All right, so there's one, two, three. Separate muscles from the temporal parietalis. If you go over here, you've got one, Yes, right over here, two. And this one has it in the back, three. Separate from the temporal parietalis. Those are called the auricularis muscles. In the human, they're, they don't do much. But if you can wiggle your ear, and wiggle your ear doesn't mean wiggle your ear like that. It means you can move your ear front to back or up and down. That's the auricularis. You might want to practice that at home because you'll have to do it for the exam. You'll have to wiggle your ears for the exam. <laughs> So that's the auricularis muscles. They're more developed in animals, right? You see a dog's ears, right? They can up, down, turn them all around. Auricularis uh, muscles.